So, have you ever looked at your keyboard and thought that some of these keys would be far more useful if I just remap them to something else? And that's how I feel about caps lock. So what I'm going to show you how to do today is how to remap your keys using Xmod Map. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's jump right into it. Okay, so first up, we're not just using Xmod Map. There's a couple of other utilities we're going to need. So let's just get those installed before we actually get started with anything. So first one is we're going to be installing Xmod Map itself. So sudo pacman dash s xorg dash x mod map on arch at least this is how it's named on your distro it might just be called x mod map but at least on arch it's xorg x mod map anyway we'll get that installed so i've already got that installed we also need a couple other programs so we need xcv now xcv is kind of optional but this is going to make the process so much easier so what xcv will let us do is actually get the names of the keys and also the key sims so xev there's two more programs we need. One is xorg set kb map or set x kb map. So now what this one will let us do is actually reset our keyboard layout. And the reason we want to do this is it's because we're going to make a mistake. So if we don't do this, there are other ways to change your keyboard layout, but this is just the easiest way to do it. Because if you want to reset it with this, all you have to do is go set x kb map and just run that and that just resets it to your default keyboard layout. Okay, so now the last thing we need is x set so that's also in xorg so x set so i've already got that installed as well and let's just quit out of that now what x set is going to do we're not using it for most of what x set does we're just going to use it to allow us to do key repeat so if you just remap a key then most of them you're not going to just be able to repeat like you could say if you hold down like the i key it just keeps going and going so if you remap say like caps lock to i for example then that's not going to repeat so you probably do want it to repeat. So caps lock is one where you don't, but there will be keys where you do want that to happen. So before we get into how this works, I just want to talk about what I'm actually doing. So I said I'm remapping caps lock, but what am I remapping caps lock to? What I'm going to do is I'm going to remap it to the escape key. And the reason for this is because if you look at your keyboard, look at where your home row is. So caps lock is on the home row and it's a pointless key. Now I know that some typists are going to say caps lock's a great key. I don't really care about caps lock. I never actually use it. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to replace it with escape. And the reason I'm doing that is because escape is a very useful key in a lot of programs. One of those being vim. So instead of having to leave the home row to actually go back into normal mode, I can just tap the caps lock key and now I'm back in normal mode. That's basically the reason why I'm doing this. So we're also just going to move the caps lock to somewhere else just because I am using it to do something, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is work out exactly what you want to remap. So if you're going to follow along with me, what I'm doing is I'm remapping my caps lock key to escape and I'm remapping the alt grave key to caps lock. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I still use the caps lock key to move around my floating windows. In BSPWM, you need some sort of leader key. And it's nice to just be able to have that on a locking key. So that's why I'm doing that. But you don't have to do that second part if you don't want to. So what we're going to want to do is actually work out what the keys are actually called. So we know what they're called on our keyboard. But we don't actually know what the proper names within X are. So what we need to do is run a program called XEV, as I mentioned before. Now, we're not going to run it like this because we have a bunch of garbage output that we don't really care about. As we can see, if I don't move my mouse, there's a bunch of information in there that we do need, but there's also a bunch of other junk we don't. So what we're going to do instead is run it with this basic script that I found on the Arch Linux wiki. What this will do is just let us get the key sims and the key names, and that's all we care about for doing this. So I've put this in a script called keys, so we just run that. So now if I start pressing keys, we start getting key names, and we start getting the key sims. So the key sims are on the left, the key names are on the right. So if I press caps lock, as we can see, the key sim for that is 66. And the name is caps underscore lock with the caps and the lock in capitals. So the other one we care about is alt graves. So that's just called alt r. Okay. So now that we have that, we can actually do something. So from this point, there's a couple of different orders you can actually do these operations. But we're going to do it in this way just so I can show you how it's going to break if you do it wrong. So the first thing you're going to want to do is... I'll just reset my keyboard because I was testing it off camera. So if you do make a mistake at any point, you can run set XKB map and you'll go back to your default settings. So I just run that and now we're back to the default settings. Okay, so the command we're going to want to run is this right here. So xmod map dash E key code 66 equals escape. So what dash E does 
is basically says run an expression on X mod map and key code 66. So key code 66 is caps lock and we're setting that equal to escape. Now we don't care about setting the like shift value or anything like that. If you just don't put anything there, it's going to default to no symbol. And if it's no symbol, then it just won't do anything if you press shift and caps lock at the same time, basically. Now we run this. So what you're going to notice is that if you say have the Vim mode activated in ZSH, you press the caps lock key and you actually go back into normal mode. Now you'll also notice that it still operates as a caps lock key and this is a serious problem, but we'll get back to fixing this in just a moment. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is replace our alt grave key with caps lock. So key code 108 equals caps lock. So this is basically the same thing we did before, but this time we're operating on the alt grave key or the alt R key instead of caps lock. And we're setting that to the caps lock key. Now you run that and as you'll see, now your alt grave key and your caps lock key both function like a caps lock, but your caps lock is also still a caps lock. And this is a very, very serious problem because if you don't fix this, What's going to happen is you're going to put yourself into caps lock mode and not really be sure why it's happened. Now we can easily fix this though. So what we're going to run is this command right here. So xmodmap dash e clear lock. So clear lock will basically say delete the current lock key. But the nice thing is, is that your alt grave key is still going to keep operating as a caps lock. Now I'm not entirely sure for the reason of that because if we run xmodmap at this point, we'll notice we don't have a lock key, but I'm going to guess that if you don't have a lock key there, it's just going to default to using caps lock. And the nice thing is that your old grave key is now operating like a caps lock. So if we press that, start typing in capitals. So that is actually really cool. So you'll also notice, I don't know if this is just on my computer or not, but your caps lock key will still light up if you press the old grave keys. So you still have the indication that you are entering caps lock mode. So we're not actually done yet because if we were to run XKB map or we restarted our computer, what would happen is we'd lose all of these settings. So how do we save this? This is pretty easy. All we have to do is run xmodmap dash PKE and this will output your current keyboard mapping to standard out. And all you have to do from here is just pipe that into a file. So for example, your xmodmap file. So you do that and then what you're going to want to do is in say your profile file for your shell or within your xnitrc. What you're going to do is basically run this right here. So bring that up and basically what we're going to do is check if the file exists and if the file exists then what we're going to do is run xmodmap and then the xmodmap file. So basically what that's going to do is load in your xmodmap settings from a file. So this file can be called anything. It's just a sensible idea to call it something like xmodmap. You could also put it in your .config folder as well if you don't want it in your home directory. So just for mapping those, that's all you have to do. Now your caps lock is going to operate like an escape key and your alt grave key is going to operate like a caps lock. Now if we were to run xmodmap dash e with another option. So if we go add say shift, so add shift equals and then if you were to say press the A key. Now what this is going to do is actually give shift powers to the A key. So we run that and that's run successfully. So if you press down A now, so it's not going to operate like it should be operating. But if we start pressing other letters, as we can see, now your A key is operating like a shift. Now you're probably not going to do this to like an A key, but maybe there's something that you do want to do it to. Like say you want to turn your caps lock into a shift key or you have some other random key that you do want to turn into a shift key. Like let's say I've got this function key here, which isn't actually bound to anything. Uh, let's say you want to turn your super key into something. So you could change super into a shift or you could even change shift into a super key. So that's something else you could do. So it's not just limited to the shift, it's limited to all of those things we saw at the start. So the shift, lock, control and all of these mod keys. So you can move these around as you like. And as we see in here, A actually has shift powers. So if you just want to clear that, that's pretty easy. You don't have to clear the entire shift key. What we can do is go remove instead of add. So this will basically remove the shift powers on A. So now if you press A, it'll go back to operating like normal. And if you start pressing other letters, it's not going to be a shift key anymore. And if we bring out X mod map again, as we can see that A key is no longer there anymore. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was key repeat. So I mentioned this earlier, but if you hold down a letter like say A, it'll just keep repeating that or you hold down like seven or a bunch of other characters in your keyboard. So this is a pretty standard feature. So if you were to remap say shift to 
A or something like that. You wouldn't ever do that, but say you did. It wouldn't actually have key repeat, or say you want to remove key repeat. The way you do this is through Xset. So if we look at the man page for Xset, basically it's a general tool for configuring X. So what we're going to do with it is just something very, very basic. So if we run Xset with the dash R option and then a key sim, so Xset dash R and the key sim for A, which I was testing off camera. So run that. And if we hold down A now, it won't actually repeat. So how do we re-add this? Now, it's not something else fancy. It's just R without the dash on there. So I run that again and we hold down A and now we have key repeat again. So I'm not gonna do this with like the caps lock or the escape I'd showed before. Partially because I think with caps lock, it doesn't actually work properly. And partially because for the new escape key, it doesn't really make sense to have a repeating escape. So I'm not gonna even bother doing that. But this gives you a pretty good idea of how it actually works. Now I should probably also mention that if you don't want to do this from the command line, there is a GUI wrapper. It is on the Arts Linux wiki for Xmod map. So if we go to the top, we go to installation and there's a program called XKeyCap. So if you do want to have a graphical front end for Xmod map, you don't really need it. As you can see, it's very, very simple to use. But if you do want that graphical front end, there is one available. I'm not going to go through it, but as I said, it is there. Now, I don't think there's anything else I wanted to mention. Yeah, so, no, there's actually not. I, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to go over in these ones as well. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it then. So, as I said, I have remapped my caps lock key to escape, just because it's so much easier to have an escape on the home row than having to go all the way up to where the escape key is. It might not seem quicker, but once you use Vim for a while, you'll really notice how much slower it is to just have to move to that escape key every single time. Having it on the home row makes so much sense. And honestly, I wish the escape was just on the home row. That would just make my life so much easier. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got all of my social links, so my Discord and my Telegram. So feel free to check those out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've also got my support link. So if you'd like to support the channel, I've got my Patreon and all my other donate links down there. So feel free to check any of those out. But as always, you don't have to support the channel if you don't want to. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platform. So my library and my BitTube. So feel free to check any of those out if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. And I'm out.